Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' mighty name, we give you all thanks and praise for this beautiful day. We are grateful, O Father, that your word is alive and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. We are grateful that your Holy Spirit who dwells on the inside of us is the great I am that I am. He is not an inferior spirit. He is greater than the one who dwells in this world, O Father. And by his presence and anointing, the word of God is going forth to talk to people and to challenge people's mindsets, O Father. We pray in Jesus' mighty name that your will will be wrought in the people who listen to the word of God. And there will be a transformation and a change that will come upon them, Lord. We thank and we worship you. Let your name be glorified as every miracle happens in the lives of your children. With every miracle, let your children cry out with thanksgiving and praise to God Almighty, giving you the glory, honor and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. Today I want to continue from where we stopped last week. I shared with you something about the uprightness of that man called Boaz. And I'd like to read to you again in Ruth chapter 2 so that you will see something that will line up with what we're going to study this week. Now there was a wealthy and influential man, this is how the New Living Translation reads, in Bethlehem named Boaz, who was a relative of Naomi's husband Elimelech. One day, the, one day Ruth the Moabite said to Naomi, let me go out into the harvest fields to pick up the stalks of grain left behind by anyone who is kind enough to let me do it. Naomi replied, all right, my daughter, go ahead. So Ruth went out to gather grain behind the harvesters. And as it happened, she found herself working in a field that belonged to Boaz, the relative of her father-in-law, Elimelech. While she was there, Boaz arrived from Bethlehem and greeted the harvesters. The Lord be with you, he said. The Lord bless you, the harvesters replied. Today I want to talk, talk to you about how when you understand the place of your assignment, there will be a blessing that you bring to that place and there will be a blessing that comes from that place to you. I want you to write it down and learn this please. I want you to note verse Ruth 2, Verses 4 and Ruth chapter 2 verse 4. Understand so clearly that your life was meant to be a blessing. Also the assigned place by God was meant to give you back a blessing. When the time came for Boaz to meet his harvesters, They've been working from morning because as you read the scriptures you will find out that uh, you know some time has passed before Boaz had come into the field and there had already been a lot of work that was accomplished and Ruth was working behind the harvesters. She didn't even dare to think that she was worthy to be with the harvesters. So even then she was considered a nobody. But listen very carefully. When Boaz enters the field, he says, the Lord be with you. And his workers replied, the harvesters replied, the Lord bless you. I like how the New Living Translation reads in this verse. I want you to write it down, New Living Translation. It calls his workers the harvesters. That means... Your harvest was meant to be a blessing to you. Your work spot was meant to be a blessing to you. Your assigned place was meant to be a blessing to you. Not a place where you are so reluctant to go. You are groaning in your spirit. You don't want to go to work. But you have to go to work because you think I have to feed my belly. Please listen. 
there is more reason to be in the assigned place than just to have your belly full. God is interested in every man's well-being. Always remember the God who created the stomach knows that it has to be fed. It's not the devil who created the digestive system and put the stomach in place. It is God Almighty who created the stomach of a man. That's why in the teaching on the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus would talk very specifically about it. And he would talk about it in such uh, terms that most times it causes people to stumble. They wonder, what is Jesus talking about? Don't worry about anything. How can I be without not worrying? Your worrying will stop when you enter into the place of rest. What is that place of rest? When you understand who created the body, who created the stomach, who created it is a God who is revealed to us in the first chapter of Genesis as a good God. Therefore, a good God knows what is required to make the body function well. The good God knows what is a requirement for a man, for his basic living. So your assigned place is not just to ha handle your basic needs. Your assigned place is to bring out the blessing what God has invested into your life. There is a blessing. Whether you know it or not, there is a blessing. If you have not discovered it, it's because you have not spent time with God, the creator God, and asked him. Remember, you need to ask God, what is the reason for my being created at a time such as this? I could have been living maybe two centuries back. You didn't want that to happen. You brought me into this world to live at a time such as this. Why? What is the purpose? What is the reason behind my coming into this world? Now, the moment Boaz enters the field, he immediately notices Ruth. When you are in your assigned place, you are very sensitive to anything that is new. Remember, Joseph got up in the morning. He was also in prison. He also ate what the prisoners ate. He had not shaven. He was dressed in prison garments like all the rest. We don't know what kind of torture was being put on them in the prison because they were all political prisoners. Sometimes you know what will happen when you are a political prisoner. And this is not a political prisoner of a democracy. This is a political prisoner under a king, a rulership in a kingdom. So definitely they would have told the ones who are going to deal with them to deal with them harshly. All must have had glum faces when they got up in the morning. But Joseph immediately noticed two people with sad countenances and immediately gravitated towards them, even towards them. Look at Boaz, immediately he asked this question. What does he ask? Then Boaz asked his foreman, who is that young woman over there? Who does she belong to? And the foreman replied, she is the young woman from Moab who came back with Naomi. She asked me this morning if she could gather grain behind the harvesters. She has been hard at work ever since, except for a few minutes rest in the shelter. Boaz went over and said to Ruth, Listen, my daughter, stay right here with us when you gather grain. Don't go to any other fields. Stay right behind the young woman in my field. See which part of the field they are harvesting and then follow them. I have warned the young men not to treat you roughly. And when you are thirsty, help yourself to the water they have drawn from the well. It's amazing 
when you are at the right places, the right people move towards you. The case of Ruth, she had come into the right field. The Bible says here, in the New Living Translation, Boaz went over to her. He didn't say, tell her to come to me. He could have sat and commanded, tell her to come to me. What makes a man stand out in uprightness is the character traits of that man. People do very little in life and they show a big deal of pride in the way they talk and the way they move and the way they act. Nothing is there in their lives. If you look at them and ask them, what have you done? Show me something which is of value that you have added to society or value that you have added to the church or of something that you have done that has produced an impact, they have nothing to talk about. Every single thing they talk about is a type of vanity. Not this man. Remember, he was a wealthy and influential man. He could have sat and waited. Instead, he went to Ruth. He went to a stranger and commanded her in front of all his workers to follow the harvesters where they were harvesting. And he gives her an assurance, no one will harm you. And if you are thirsty, help yourself to the water they have drawn from the well. That means don't remain thirsty because you are of a different race, because you are not a part of the Jewish nation or the Jewish culture. It's very important that you understand the uprightness of this man. Today there are certain places that you can go into, especially in villages, where you cannot even get a cup of water given to you by somebody when you ask them for water. They look down upon you. They hate you. All this is caused by a build-up of evil, unclean thoughts over the centuries. So much so, they don't value a person to being created in the image and likeness of God. So they will not touch you. They will not even give you a glass of water. Or sometimes they will allot a particular glass and keep it in one place, and they will come and pour the water there, and after they moved out only, you can take it and drink it. Sometimes they'll outrightly tell you no water. Uprightness is part of our teaching in this study that has to do with the character change. What type of a character are you? Not only in your assigned place you will meet people who are of a different temperament. What kind of word are you talking to them? Is it a kind word of assurance? Is it a place where you bring blessing and the place blesses you back? It's amazing. Bible says, Ruth fell at his feet and thanked him warmly. What have I done to deserve such kindness? She asked, I am only a foreigner. Yes, I know, Boaz replied. You can imagine that scenario. Here is a very wealthy man. Here is a very poor widow, young widow. Lost everything. Lost her husband. Lost everything. There is no desire in her to be with her folks. She joins Naomi, comes to Bethlehem, Judah. Then takes the step of faith to go and work. Leaves her house which I shared with you last week, the importance of going to a place of assignment. Food will not come to you. You have to go. You have to reach out. And in doing it, follow very carefully, she cries out, I am only a foreigner. Yes, I know, verse 11. Boaz replied, but I also know about everything you have done for your mother-in-law since the death of your husband. 
I have heard how you left your father and mother and your own land to live here among complete strangers. May the Lord, the God of Israel, under whose wings you have come to take refuge, reward you fully for what you have done. Remember the rewards come from God. When you are in your assigned place, financial blessing will not be a problem. The moment Ruth came into a place where Boaz began to take note of her, her work life did not diminish. I want you to note this. Sometimes people when they meet the boss, because they have met the boss, they become lazy. Familiarity will begin to breed contempt in their minds. They no longer work with the fear of God in their heart that their ultimate response and accountability is to God. That's because they know the main man. Ruth's work life never diminished. And that's one good reason for you to understand that when God brings you into contact with the main people, your work life should not diminish. Your ultimate fulfillment of God's destiny in your life comes when you give yourself the grace which is flowing in you full control so that you can be everything that God wants you to be. You can work with a clear conscience. You can work with everything that you have. And you can work as an example to the ones who are watching it. Remember, everyone was watching her. Everyone who were there in Boaz's field were Israelite workers. But this man has heard about her. He never went seeking for her. He came to the place of his work. God worked in Ruth to bring her to the place that was the right place for them to meet. And remember, it was the place that ultimately produced the blessing. For Ruth, it was the blessing of the barley and the harvest of wheat. Imagine, because they didn't know much in Moab, they moved to Bethlehem, Judah. They just heard God is moving in Bethlehem, Judah. There's bread there. Let's go. That means even for basic needs, this family of Naomi and Ruth were suffering. They came back empty, according to Naomi's confession. I went out full, but when I came back, I came back empty. Please listen, and listen very carefully. God wants you to be a blessing. But that blessing comes not because you groan and moan when you go to work. The Bible is so clear about the lifestyle of uprightness. Sadly, many in the Christian church do not come from a Jewish background. The entire worldwide church is filled with ex-Gentiles. And ex-Gentiles were not ever in touch with a righteous God. They have never met with a righteous God. They have never seen a righteous God at work. They come from different backgrounds. Most of the time, backgrounds that were filled with so much of uh, unpleasant and worthless thoughts. So when they come into the Christian church, instead of letting their minds be renewed with the word of God, even though the Bible tells us, renew your mind with the word of God, that you may know what is the perfect will of God. Still, most don't do it. They never renew their mind with the, will, with the word of God. They assume they are doing it. But in lifestyle, when you look at the lifestyle, you will know that the lifestyle is terrible. And so these ex-Gentiles in the Christian church, let's familiarity breed contempt. The moment they know they are close to the main man, they'll start asking for unnatural favors. They will start dipping in their way of performing at work. Remember, 
your assigned place is a place where you pour out your life into. You must know what you're hearing this moment. It is a place where you know my life has to be poured out into that place. If I'm here in Christ Chapel ministering for these 27 years as a pastor, it's because I believe in my heart sincerely. It's a place where I pour out my life into the work I do here for the glory of God. Which means there are certain things that you will never see me doing or assuming or taking lightly. You must understand the price you pay. I'm shocked when I see people just casually coming, casually attending, casually going for work. They have no fear of God in their heart. Ultimately, it's the fear of God which is the defining factor in a man knowing his assigned place. Let me read to you, please, from Ruth chapter 2. I hope I continue to please you, sir, she replied. Hallelujah. Make a note of that, please. I hope I continue to please you, sir, she replied. You have comforted me by speaking so kindly to me, even though I'm not one of your workers. At meal time, Boaz called to her, Come over here and help yourself to some food. You can dip your bread in the sour wine. Go back to the verses we read earlier from Deuteronomy. Remember, the sheaves had to be left behind. The oil had to be made available if needed for the fatherless, the widow and the stranger. And finally, the grapes also had to be made available. I want you to note the way in which Boaz was giving his harvesters a good life. In the process, he introduces Ruth to the good life. Are you listening? He is not introducing her to a life only where water is available to her. No food for you. There is no abundance in my house to feed one more mouth. Or if I feed one more mouth, it's going to cost me this much. That's how people think today. They have no fear of God in their heart. They don't even know that the little that God gave them is because of the mercy of God. They assume that they are very self-righteous. They assume that they have such a close relationship with God that they can walk over people and they can do this and that. They don't even know the place of their origins. How God in his mercy reached out and touched people and through that brought about change in their lives. And today they are enjoying so much of blessing. The game changer came when somebody moved into that assigned place. It's going to be an eye-opener to you when you understand this. Look at what he tells Ruth. Help yourself to some food. You can dip your bread in the sour wine. So she sat with this harvesters. Are you listening? She sat not behind the harvesters. She sat with his harvesters. How do you treat your workers? The walk of uprightness must bring change into your mind. You have to understand when people slog and work hard to bring you success, you must be willing to make certain changes in your life that will be a blessing to them who have worked hard to give you that success. Today, very few people behave in a righteous manner with their workers. They are so unrighteous. So unrighteous. 
that they don't even understand that their unrighteousness creates gaps through which the enemy simply attacks them. Verse 14. So she sat with his harvesters and Boaz gave her some roasted grain to eat. She ate all she wanted and still had some left over. Please listen. She's coming into the life of a man who's walking in blessing. When you enter the assigned place, you will have the leftovers come into your hand. Not the leftover. You will have something left over in your hand after you have done eating. Abundance. You can interpret leftover in two ways. Some people only eat the leftovers. We are not talking about that. We are talking about a man whose hands were blessed because of the labor of his hands lining up with the word of God. Now, when he sits to have a meal, he comes at the appropriate time. He is not sitting at home and having his meal. He is sitting with his harvesters. He, know this people, he knew that these people have worked hard all day long. And he doesn't want to belittle them or belittle their work. So he sits along with them. And as he eats, he takes some of the roasted grain and gives it to her. And she ate all she wanted and still had some left over. I want you to mark verse 14. Because verse 14 is very, very important. If you understand verse 14, you will understand how abundance begins to come into your life when you are in the right assigned place. Lack disappears just like that. When you come into the place where you are assigned to work and God brings you to the place where he knows through this person's life or through this work you do in this place, you will have abundance in such a way that you will have all that you want and you will have some left over. When Ruth went back to work again, Boaz ordered his young men, let her gather grain right among the sheaves without stopping her. Now don't allow her to work behind you. Let her work alongside with you. And pull out some heads of barley from the bundles and drop them on purpose for her. This is favor. Remember, she is not going and touching the grain directly. She is picking up from what has fallen on the ground. Now, some of these workers have worked very hard. Back-breaking job. You meet harvesters, they will tell you harvesting is terrible. Especially manual harvesting. And I've literally seen it when I went to Manipur and I stayed in a place which is just next to a field. Backbreaking job. Please listen. You must understand that these workers have worked hard. They have gathered a bundle. Boaz is saying some of the heads of barley from that bundles that you picked, drop them on purpose for her. That is favor. That's why one day of favor is worth a thousand days of labor. When God begins to show you favor, you will begin to see God's plan working out in your life. Please listen and listen very carefully. Many people are too lazy and not diligent when it comes to walking with God. That's why I spoke to you about fasting, prayer, and the need to get alone with the great I am that I am. One moment of favor from him will transform your life. One word from him. 
just a word from him will give you the blessing you want for a lifetime. Many of you may not understand it. But I want you to understand. It's very, very important for you to know that all these things are very important for your life. The Bible says, when Ruth went back to work again, Boaz ordered his young men. So it is not a uh, choice that they had. He told them, I know you're working hard, I know you tied the bundles together, but still, break off some of the heads of barley. Let it fall purposely for her. Let her pick them up and don't give her a hard time. That means don't even make a cynical remark and say, what for you? Now the boss has seen you. Don't speak any word that will offend her. That means God can stop the mouths of people who offend you. Many people are terribly uh, upset when they hear people make remarks, especially when they prosper. Immediately the remarks will fly because others can't stand your prosperity. Others can't stand you buying something new. Others just can't stand you doing something new. The moment you buy something, they're angry with you. The moment they, get you, they see you get something, they want to know why you got it. Why didn't they get it? So you're living in the midst of people who always don't appreciate your kindness and your life and the grace of God that is in your life. But you must understand one thing. When God speaks, it's like what Boaz said. He told the young men, don't give her a hard time. Remember, it is only God Almighty who knows the kind of life you have gone through already. The pain, the agony, the loneliness, the tears in private. Only God knows it. He is the only one who can speak and say, don't give her a hard time. You know, the Job was tormented by Satan for 10 months. But he couldn't cross one place. God had told Satan, you cannot touch his life. Don't assume that the great I am, that I am, is a helpless God. The devil is the prince of this world and he can do whatever he wants. No, he cannot do whatever he wants. Everything is going according to the plan of God. Everything is going according to the things that God has ordained to happen in each decade and in each year for his glory. Now, let me continue reading, please. So Ruth gathered barley there all day. And when she beat out the grain that evening, it filled an entire basket. It was not possible in those days for that kind of abundance to come into a person's hands. You will notice it when you read a little later. She carried it back into town and showed it to her mother-in-law. Ruth also gave her the roasted grain that was left over from her meal. That means obviously that roasted grain was something that was a delicacy. Something very tasty and nutritious. Because it was given for harvesters who had been working hard. Now look at Naomi's reply. Where did you gather all this grain today? Naomi asked, where did you work? May the Lord bless the one who helped you. Now Naomi is a sharp woman. She's not a lazy woman. She's a very sharp lady. She understands very well a Moabite woman in a Jewish field gathering grain behind the harvesters surely cannot come back with this much of grain. Somebody has helped my daughter-in-law. Now that somebody must be blessed. Remember when you are in your place of assignment, when you are blessed by God to invest your life in that place, 
just as the harvesters blessed Boaz, the recipients of your mercy and favor will also bless you. Can you imagine Naomi's blessing as a widow and Ruth joining her as a widow to bless Boaz was a double blessing that Boaz was getting from the mouths and hearts of widows who had found favor with God. Think about it. Allow the scriptures to work in your spirit. Don't throw away the scriptures and think you know everything. Oh, I'm a go-getter. I am a qualified man. I have done this. I have done that. When I speak, people will listen. All that will become nothing when you ultimately end your career. And that's the day you will know, unless you are walking in favor with God, you will be a nobody in no time. Don't even waste your life fooling yourself. Stay connected with the great I am. You will have a very fruitful life and a lifetime till the very end of your days. If you have your entire life intertwined only with your work, no time for God, no time for worship, no time for prayer, no time to spend with Him, too busy. Don't talk to me about prayer. I have so much of work to complete. Be warned. Someday it will boomerang. And by the time, it will be very painful. Now, please let's read. So Ruth told her mother-in-law about the man in whose field she had worked. She said, the man I worked with today is named... Boaz. Listen, Ruth herself doesn't know who she, who this man is. She must have been surprised when he said, I know everything about you. She doesn't know who he is, still. The word tells us in verse 20, May the Lord bless him, Naomi told her daughter-in-law. He is showing his kindness to us, as well as to your dead husband. The man is one of our closest relatives, one of our family redeemers. That's the meaning of the word kinsman redeemer. He's a redeemer of families. Stay connected with God. He can redeem your entire family. He can bless your entire family. Your family will enjoy untold abundance when they stay connected with him. If they connect with pride, if they connect with greed, if they connect with envy, if they connect with any other lifestyle, manipulation, lying, trying to outdo the other person and do a preemptive strike, doesn't help. Because that's not in line with the favor of God. You need a person who is like this, a family redeemer. That's why the walk of uprightness will connect you with righteousness. Everything about the book of Proverbs actually is not just about wisdom alone. It's heavily loaded with righteousness. When there is righteousness, there is great blessing. When there is wickedness, wickedness leads to death. He was 21. Then Ruth said, what's more? Boaz even told me to come back and stay with his harvesters until the entire harvest is completed. That means it's not just a one day affair. Till the entire harvest is completed, be with us. That's the opening that God gives you with favor. People want you. They know that something is special about your life. They may not have fully discovered it. But they're able to see favor that is drawing them to you. Verse 22. Good, Naomi exclaimed. Do as he said, my daughter. Stay with his young women right through the whole harvest. You might be harassed in other fields, but you will be safe with him. 
So Ruth worked alongside the women in Boaz's fields, gathered grain with them until the end of the barley harvest. Then she continued working with them through the wheat harvest in early summer. And all the while, she lived with her mother-in-law. It's very important for you to see, work was not something Ruth shunned. Like I told you, familiarity didn't make her take an off. So the people make an excuse for no reason. They think they're entitled to something that leads to a uh, what they say, having a break. When you're passionate about your work, even the little break you don't like to take. I'll give you an example before we close. See Jesus at the well of Samaria. He's tired, thirsty, hungry also. He sent his disciples to get food. In the meanwhile, the woman comes to the well of Samaria, a Samaritan woman. She's coming to draw water. It's a very hot time in the day. Jesus begins to talk to her. Then all of a sudden, he forgets that he's thirsty. And then a little later, when the disciples come to him, they brought food. He's talking about being full. Those are not ordinary statements. These are things that we need to keep before us and understand these are the principles that define our character. If you're only interested in food, if you're only interested in drink, that's all that is on your heart and mind. Something is wrong with you, not with the God who blesses a man. So always take note of the passion that you have for the work place that is assigned to you. Oftentimes it may be like we see in Jesus' days, a very tiresome day, physically tiring. You know how a man can be when he is thirsty. It's terrible. All that is on his mind is I need to hydrate myself. And sometimes when you are so thirsty, your mind doesn't even work correctly. But you see the grace on Jesus' life manifesting. It's amazing. Looks like all tiredness left when he started ministering. All hunger left when he started ministering. So please consider all these things in the light of what we are learning by the presence and power of the Holy Spirit. And make good use of the word of God. So that a uh, transformation will happen in your life which will be a game changer. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' blessed name, we give you thanks and praise for this beautiful day, Lord. We are grateful for your grace that is more than sufficient for each one of us who are in your kingdom. Your word is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. Oh, mighty God, it's able to tear down things that have to be toned down, Lord. And it is able to penetrate hardness and bring about a change in people's lives so far. The Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 4, when you hear his voice, don't harden your hearts. Because if you harden your hearts, you will not enter into the rest God has ordained for you. And I pray in Jesus' name that humility and softness of heart and Lord humbleness will be established in the hearts of your people. That their lifestyles will be drastically changed in line with the walk of uprightness. Because the Bible says, no good thing will you withhold from them who walk uprightly. We give you thanks and praise. Continue to bless your children mightily. That this entire month, entire week, entire year, O oh God, in Jesus' name, be full of Good things that will happen in the lives of your children for your glory. We thank you and we worship you. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. And may the blessing of God the Father, the blessing of God the Son, and the blessing of God the Holy Spirit rest and abide with each one of us 
both now and until Jesus comes again. நம்முடைய ஆண்டவராக இயேசு கிறிஸ்துவின் கிருபையும் பிதாவாகிய தேவனின் அன்பும் தூய பரிசுத்த ஆவியானுடைய ஐக்கியமும் நம்மோடு கூட இன்றும் என்றும் இருப்பதாக ஆமேன் அண்ட் ஆமேன் ஹால் எலூவியா மே காட் பிளெஸ் யூ அண்ட் மே த பீஸ் ஆஃப் காட் விச் பாஸ் அத் ஆல் அண்டர்ஸ்டாண்டிங் ரெஸ்ட் அண்ட் ரெயின் சுப்ரீம் இன் யோர் ஹார்ட்ஸ் அண்ட் யோர் மைண்ட்ஸ் டோன்ட் பி ட்ரபிள்ட் ஜீசஸ் செட் பி ஆஃப் குட் சியர் ஐ ஹவ் ஓவர் கம் த வேர்ல்ட் He has overcome the world. With him you will overcome everything that is confronting you. Do share this word with somebody. Because remember, somebody needs to hear the word to be set free. God bless you. Make sure you don't miss receiving our free monthly newsletter, The Pulpit, which contains a four-part teaching series on various Bible topics that will help you live in victory. You can read it online by going to Christchapel.in.com. and click on ebook library where you will find all our newsletters available to receive a physical copy of pulpit you can go to christchapel.in and click on join now and fill in your complete postal mailing address along with your contact mobile number and we will be happy to send it to you free and postpaid should you want to receive the newsletter via email do include your request along with your current email id Thank you and God bless.